Hello everyone and welcome to all of you in Smart Study ACC. My name is Azizur Rahman and I will be teaching advanced taxation paper over here at Smart Study ACC. So I'm an ACC member apart from ACC, I'm also a member of CPN BIFA certifications. And I'm teaching this paper from almost last 11 years now. So apart from teaching, uh, I'm also involved uh, in a firm providing UK consultancy services. So I'm also working as a tax advisor for the UK tax as well. So this was a brief introduction regarding myself. So without wasting any time, let's start our paper, which is advanced taxation. Today's class is just on introduction and what are the areas which we are going to cover in this paper and uh, what are the difficulties you guys are going to face in this paper and so on. So today's class is just on introduction. Let's start with the word tax. Tax or taxation, students, tax means part or portion. So students, part or portion of your income, which we will contribute towards state against the facilities which we are receiving from the state is called tax. I'm repeating once again, what is tax? Tax is basically portion part of our income, which we will contribute towards government against the facilities which we are receiving from the government. So what are the basically facilities which we are receiving from the state? For example, we are receiving uh, health services, we are receiving uh, security facilities, we are receiving infrastructure, we are receiving transport, we are receiving medical facilities. So there are so many facilities which we are receiving from the state and obviously we are contributing against those facilities. That's why we are paying tax. This is the basic purpose of paying tax. As far as different types of tax are concerned, which we are going to cover in this paper. So students, from payment perspective, from payment perspective, there are two types of tax. Right now, we are going to cover these types from payment perspective. One is direct tax. As the name explains by itself, the tax which is paid directly to, to the tax authorities is called direct tax. And before we move forward, please remember we are studying UK taxation. As you already know, we are studying UK taxation. And the tax authority in the UK is called HMRC. Her Majesty of Revenue and Custom. So the tax authority in the UK is called HMRC, Her Majesty of Revenue and Custom. And the act currently we are studying that is Finance Act 2020. And uh, this act is examinable for the upcoming four attempts for June uh, 21, for September 21, for December 21, and for March 22. So we are going to cover Finance Act 2020 in the upcoming four sessions. So in the UK, there are two types of taxes. One is in direct tax. So the tax paid to the tax authorities directly is called direct tax. And the second type is called indirect tax. So first of all, let's discuss the different types of the direct tax, which we are going to cover over here. First of all, income tax. What is income tax? Tax paid by an individual on his income is called income tax, and it is paid by the taxpayer directly to the tax authorities. That's why it's called income tax. Second type is called capital gain tax, I'm writing it down in the short form, CGT. 
So CGT stands for capital gains tax. So the tax paid on the capital gains by an individual is called capital gains tax. And what is capital gain? Students, as you all know, you are studying advanced taxation paper over here. So what is capital gain? Profit on sale of non-current assets. So whenever we are going to sell a non-current asset, obviously there are two possibilities. Either there will be a profit or loss. We are not going to pay any tax on the losses. Alternatively, if we are going to sell any non-current asset and we are having profits on sale on that non-current asset, we are going to pay tax. So what is capital gain? profit on sale of non-current assets. And what is capital gains tax? Tax paid on the capital gains is called capital gains tax. So this is the second type of the tax, which we are going to cover once again, it is direct tax. Third one is called inheritance tax. As the name explains by itself, tax paid on the inheritance is called inheritance tax. Whenever you are going to receive any gift, you are going to pay tax. So all types of gifts are considered as inheritance in the UK. I'm repeating once again, all types of gifts which you are receiving are considered as inheritance and you are going to pay tax on those gifts. Either someone is giving a gift during his lifetime or you are receiving gift on his death. In both cases, there will be IHT implications. Next one is corporation tax. tax paid by the companies is called corporation tax. And obviously, once again, it is type of direct tax. So there are four, these are the four types of direct tax which we are going to cover in this paper. Secondly, indirect tax. The tax which is not directly paid to the tax authorities. So major portion of this tax is paid indirectly major portion i'm not saying that 100 percent portion is paid through through a medium or an agent so major portion of this tax is paid through an intermediary so the main type we are going to cover there is only one type of indirect tax which are which we will cover over here and that is value added tax so whenever we are going to purchase anything from a superstore obviously we are going to pay value added tax to the superstore and he is going to pay to the tax authorities on our behalf. So even though we are the final consumer, we are uh, paying value added tax, but we are not paying directly to the tax authorities. We are paying through an intermediary. That's why it is called a direct tax. So these are the five types of taxes which we are going to cover in this paper. It is very important It is very important to identify what are the types of taxes which individuals are going to pay and what are the types of taxes which companies are going to pay. So students, individuals are going to pay income tax. Individuals are going to pay CGT. Individuals are going to pay IHT. IHT means inheritance tax. And as far as companies are concerned, there is only one type of tax, which is called corporation tax. So what about value added tax? So either company is going to pay value added tax or the individual. So the answer is value added tax is basically relates to businesses. If we are running a sole trader business, that business relates to an individual and individual is going to pay this tax. If the question is on the company and companies operating business, so company is also going to pay tax. So value added tax is basically, value added tax basically relates to businesses. And it depends upon the nature of the business. If business is sole trader business or partnership business, sole trader or the partnership business,
In this case, individual will pay value added tax. This tax relates to individuals. And on the other hand, if the business relates to company, in that case, obviously company is going to pay this tax. So value added tax basically relates to businesses. Now, I'm moving towards those questions which majority of the students are interested to ask. And uh, most of the students ask these questions. For example, I'm starting with what is the difference between F6 and P6? This is a very common question. Difference between F6 and P6. So, F6 is basically taxation paper and P6 is your advanced taxation paper. So what is the difference between these two papers? Both these papers are uh, on taxation and uh, we are going to cover the same rules in both these papers. So students, uh, I'm going to explain this question from two perspectives. First of all, if we are uh, thinking from knowledge perspective, So students, almost 70% same knowledge is covered in both F6 and P6 paper because uh, taxation is law and the law will remain same either it is uh, taxation or it, it is advanced taxation. So in both papers, the law will remain same. And as far as knowledge is concerned, we are going to cover almost 70% same knowledge in P6 paper. So which have, we have already covered in the taxation paper. But on the other hand, if you are asking this question from exam perspective, so students, 100% change. So you are going to see totally different questions in the advanced taxation paper, for example, in the F6 exam, <clears throat> most of the time, most of the time, you will see questions either on individual topics or individual type of text. For example, you will see a question on employment income maybe. You will see a question in the exam on trading profit. You will see a question in the exam uh, on maybe pension income. You will see a question uh, in the exam maybe on NIC. So either individual topic is going to be examined or individual type of text is going to be examined in the F6 paper. For example, uh, your examiner will set a question on the income tax. Your examiner may set a question uh, on, uh, on maybe CGT. Your examiner may set a question on the IEHT. So in the F6 uh, paper, your examiner is going to set a question either on individual topics or individual type of tax. On the other hand, on the other hand, when you will look at the questions in P6 exam, you are not going to see any question on a single type of tax. Most of the time, I'm not saying always, but most of the time, you will see different questions in the P6 and there will be more than one type of the tax which will be examined in a single question. For example, so in the P6, you will attempt multiple type of tax in single question.
For example, I'm just going to give you a few examples of the type of questions which we are going to uh, cover in this advanced taxation paper. And please remember, advanced taxation paper is all about tax planning. So over here, you are going to attempt uh, different questions as a tax advisor. All you need to do, all you need to concentrate is on saving of tax. So when, when attempting questions in the P6, so you need to keep in mind two things. That you are a tax advisor. And when you are working as a tax advisor, please keep two things in your mind. First of all, always go for short term. Even though, even though uh, there will be much more amount of tax savings in the long term, but you will prefer short term. Because if you will save the tax of the client in the current year, obviously he's going uh, to come back in the next year. And obviously you are going to earn from the same client in the next year as well. But if you will not save the tax of the client in the current year, he's not going to visit you in the next year as well. So in order to retain your clients, in order to provide benefit to your clients, always think from short term perspective. And this approach is practical approach. This approach is preferable uh, in the practical life as well and in this paper as well. So you, you just need to think from short term perspective. Secondly, secondly, all you need to concentrate is on tax saving. So the main focus should be on tax savings and tax saving from short term perspective. Your approach should always be in the short. Term. So now let's discuss a few examples of questions which you will see in this paper. For example, An individual sold his home and started sole trader business. So in this example, an individual has sold his home. So home is obviously a non-current asset. Home is obviously a non-current asset. So an individual has sold his home. It means an individual has sold a non-current asset and he's going to pay CGT. So the first type of tax which is examined over here is capital gains tax and he has started business with that money and he's going to on trading profit from the sole trader business and he's going to pay income tax. So in the same question, your examiner has examined CGT and income tax. Another example. You have inherited few assets. Later on sold them. If you have inherited few assets, so IHT is applicable on inheritance. And when you have sold those assets, you are going to pay CGT. So in the same question, you are going to uh, attempt IHT and you are going to attempt CGT as well. Another example, you are running a sole trader business 
and later on you have incorporated your business incorporated into company so previously you are running your business as a sole trader so you are earning profits from your sole trader business and individual who earns trade sole trader income need to pay income tax and once you have registered a company then companies will pay corporation tax so in the same question the examiner has examined income tax and corporation tax so these are the types of questions you will see in this paper even though sometimes sometimes uh, maybe 5 marks 6 marks 7 marks question um, may be set on a single type of tax there are possibilities there are chances but as far as whole question is concerned there are very few chances that the whole question will be set on a single type of tax so this is the difference between f6 and p6 moving forward what are the challenges you are going to face in this paper so what are the challenges and uh, how we are going to tackle these challenges what are the solutions uh, which we will provide you guys in order to tackle these problems first of all the very basic problem is the burden at this level most of you guys are working somewhere you are not full time student and obviously advanced taxation paper has a very huge syllabus so the burden is the very basic problem over here so you don't have that much time to study and obviously you need to cover whole syllabus and you need to pass this exam in the very first attempt so the solution of this problem is our smart notes these notes are in updation process and these notes will be available uh, maybe after two weeks but i will provide the notes for the very first session which we are going to cover first of all so that uh, your study will not disturb so i will provide no i will update and provide the notes for for section number 1 which we are going to start first of all and later on you will receive the uh, full copy of these notes and almost these notes consist of 55 pages only these notes are very concise and they are written to the point so you need to memorize these 55 pages and these notes will cover each and every point but if you have time then you should read kaplan book but if you have time so for example if anyone is not working and obviously he is a full time student then you should read the kaplan book as well so if you are a full time student then you should read kaplan book but for all students for all students at least practice examples or test your understandings whatever you want whatever you like so either practice different examples or test your understandings or both if you have time obviously it all depends upon time but it's your choice either you should practice all the examples from the book or the or test your understandings you can choose either so but you should practice you should practice few examples and with the help of these small examples 
uh, you will have very good grip on the rules as well. So this will these examples will improve your understanding. So at minimum, please either practice examples from your Kaplan book or test your understandings. And if you have time, then you should practice both. And then if you still have time, then you should read the book. But at minimum, minimum, memorize these notes and practice either example or test your understandings. And you can use Kaplan book for those topics uh, in which you are not comfortable. For example, uh, if you have memorized a topic from the smart notes and you're not comfortable in that topic, so you can use Kaplan book for that particular topic. So this was the very first challenge and here we have the solution for this problem. Second challenge. There's a huge gap between F6 and P6. So there's a huge gap between uh, your taxation paper and uh, advanced taxation paper. So uh, most of the students are attempting uh, advanced taxation paper after maybe 1.5 years or two years or three years after uh, the F6 exam. So there's a huge gap between F6 and P6 and uh, you guys will not be able to recall anything which you have covered in your taxation paper when you have passed this paper. So obviously due to uh, time limitation, there is a huge gap. So due to this gap, you have forgotten anything you have covered in the F6 paper. So students, we don't worry, we are going to revise anything everything of F6 paper over here. So we are going to revise 100% F6 and we are going to cover P6 as well. But it will create a huge burden and uh, you need to, we need to speed up a bit guys. The next challenge, the main reason of failure in the advanced taxation paper is wrong study approach. Students, there is difference between understanding anything and memorize anything. So students, you are going to tell me which one is more important, understanding anything or memorizing anything. You are going to tell me in the chat section, what is most important in your opinion, understanding a text rule or memorizing a text rule. Students, right now, right now, uh, if you are not working as a tax advisor in, in your practical life, right now, uh, everything which we will discuss over here will be from exam perspective. So the, our first priority is to pass this exam. And uh, as far as exam perspective is concerned, I'm not saying that understanding the rules is not important, but the first priority should be to memorize a rule. And the second priority should be to understand this rule. So understanding the rule is very, very important, but memorizing these rules is more important than understanding the rules. So why I'm saying all this? Um, because if you have memorized a rule, then there are chances maybe you are going to apply that rule in your exam.
So, but if you have a very good understanding of a topic, but you have not memorized that rule, in that case, you will not be able to recall that rule in your exam. And obviously you are not going to get any marks because you don't remember this rule in your exams. But <clears throat> most of the students, most of the students will spend most of their time in understanding the rules. They will spend, for example, maybe one and a half month in reading the book, understanding the rules, and they are not, not memorizing these rules. They are just reading and they are just understanding what is the basic purpose of this rule. So the, uh, normally in, in two month session, the students will spend one and a half month in understanding these rules. And obviously, uh, I'm not saying that he's wasting uh, his time, but he's not memorizing these rules. And when he will move towards, when he will move towards kit practice, he, he has the understanding of everything, but he has not memorized these rules. And uh, when he will move towards past paper uh, questions or to, when he will move towards kit questions, he will find these questions very difficult because he has not memorized these rules. When he's going to attempt these rules, he need to recall these rules in his mind. And because he has not memorized these rules, so not, nothing is in his mind. How, so how is going to attempt this question? So they will find these questions very, very difficult. And they will complain that teacher was not good. His main concentration was to cover the syllabus and uh, uh, our understanding was not good. But in fact, you have spent 1.5 months in just understanding these rules. So you guys are not kids. And if you have spent almost 75% of your time in understanding these rules, and at the end of the day, you are saying that you are unable to understand these rules, then it means you have just wasted your 1.5 months. So understanding these rules is very, very important, but memorizing these rules is more important as compared to understanding these rules. So you just need, obviously, Obviously, you should understand these rules. I'm, I'm, I'm going to explain every rule in the class, but at the same time, you should focus on memorizing these rules. And I have a solution for this problem. I have a solution for this problem in the form of mind map. I will provide a document called mind map. So what is mind map approach? This is basically revision through quiz. For example, if you have memorized a topic, if you have covered a topic, you should open mind map there are three, four questions uh, related to every topic. So you should read those questions. And these questions are not basically taken from your past papers. And these are basically the requirements of your examiners. And I have added a few more questions. So I have added a quiz. For example, you will see uh, a question, what is the definition of this point? What are the main rules of this point? What are the conditions for this point? So please, once you are done with the revision of a topic, please close your notes, please close all the helping material you are using and pick up the mind map for that topic and try to give answers for these quiz questions. If you are able to recall the answers of these uh, questions in your mind, it means your memory is very good. You are able to memorize these rules. You are good to move towards next topic. But if you are not able to recall this topic in your mind, when you have moved toward mind map, it means this topic still needs more time. So you should focus on memorizing these rules. Got it? So students, this is, this is basically the guarantee to pass this exam. Mind map is basically the guarantee to pass this exam.
guarantee to pass. Almost 70% chances will depend upon this mind map. If you will use this mind map properly, then there are 70% uh, chances that you are going to pass this exam. And remaining 30% chances will depend upon practice. Obviously, without practice, you will not be able to tackle the questions. So 70% success chances will depend upon the usage of mind map. And uh, I'm not saying that you should only focus on memorizing these rules. Understanding is very important. I have already explained this point enough uh, in enough detail. So you should focus on these two points, memorizing the rules with the help of mind map. Secondly, you should focus on the practice. So this is the right study approach as far as this paper is concerned. The main reason of failure as per your examiner is lack of practice. Your examiner said multiple times that the main reason of failure in this paper is lack of practice. Students are not able uh, to read the requirements carefully. Students are not able uh, to pick up the requirements. Students are not able to understand the requirements and pick up the appropriate data required for that particular requirement. So students, we will use BPP kit for the practice because BPP kit uh, has updated questions. So either you will you can use Kaplan or BPP kit, by, but we will use BPP kit in our live sessions. And uh, both kits are same because both kits include past paper questions. Either you, you are using Kaplan kit or BPP kit, but we will use BPP kit in our paper. So. Uh, sixty percent kit questions will be practiced in the class. That that is a huge ratio. So we will practice almost sixty percent questions in our classes. And we will practice forty percent questions in the assignments. So I will give you weekly assignments, maybe two or three questions in the assignment, and you are going to attempt these questions by yourself. So in this way, we are going to ensure the practice as well. So now, Approach to attempt exam. Students, there are two parts in your exams, part A, part B. In the part A, you will see two questions. Question number one will be of 35 marks and question number two will be of 25 marks. And in the part B, there will be question number three worth 20 marks and question number four worth 20 marks. Students, you are going to attempt, always you are going to attempt part B first, and then you will move towards part A. So first of all, you are going to attempt question number two, and you are going to question number one at the end. Because in the part B, these are simple, small, straightforward questions. These are simple, small, straightforward questions in the part B. 
So you will be able to tackle exam pressure if you are going to attempt section B or part B first. So it will improve the chances uh, to attempt more paper in the exam and it will also increase the chances uh, of passing this exam. So this is not an option. This is not an option. If you are studying uh, with me, this is compulsion that you are going to attempt part B first and then question number two. And finally, you are going to attempt question number one because and there is no choice in this paper. You need to attempt all four questions. You have to attempt all four questions in order to pass this exam. If you are going to skip any one question, you are not going to pass this exam. So you, you need to practice sufficient questions uh, so that you may have uh, enough speed to tackle all these four questions in three hours exam. And you are going to attempt questions in the exam with this sequence. So final last point is study material. Students, we are going to use Kaplan book as discussed earlier but we will use this book only for examples and test understandings. We are going to use BPP kit. We are going to use smart notes. And we are going to use mind map. And anything else is strictly prohibited in this in this session because it is very short session don't go for too many notes too many books too many articles please try to focus only on these four uh, types of study materials kaplan book bpp kit smart notes and mind map you are just going to focus on these four things and you you are going to uh, succeed in this exam So anything else is strictly prohibited if you are studying with me. As far as syllabus coverage is concerned, students, first of all, we will start with capital gains tax. First of all, we will cover capital gains tax. Secondly, we will cover inheritance tax. Then we will cover value added tax. So these are basically three small areas comparatively as compared to income tax and corporation tax. So, CGT, IHT, value added tax, then income tax, finally we will cover corporation tax. So we are going to cover our syllabus in the sequence. And uh, we will practice kit questions uh, over here. Maybe two, three. And major kit questions. We will practice few kit questions over here, but the major practice will be at the end of the syllabus. But it doesn't mean that we will practice all of the questions at the end of the syllabus. We will practice few questions uh, over here and over here as well. But as I have explained earlier, that in the P6 exam, in, in a single question, you are going to see multiple type of tax. So it will not be possible uh, to, to go for questions without covering all types of taxes. 
but where possible where possible for example if there are few questions which are only on cgt and iht so after cgt and iht we will cover those questions if we will find few questions just on income tax or in these four areas so after covering these four areas we will practice few questions so this is uh, the study plan for you guys and uh, deadline students so your deadline is exam date this is my commitment we have just two months don't expect that i'm going to give you any time for the preparation what is deadline your exam date is deadline this is my commitment i'm not committing anything which i'm not going to fulfill so uh, as far as my commitment is concerned your exam date is my commitment everything will be covered everything will be covered before your exams because because i'm not going to give you any time for the preparation you have 5 days in every week for the preparations and you, and uh, this is very huge paper and if you you are not going to start preparation right from the first week you are not going to get marks in this paper so your your preparation is going to start from right from the week number 1 and i'm going to give you time for the preparation 5 days in every single week so as far as my commitment is concerned my commitment is exam deadline but but uh, i will try i will try to complete as you will normally normally uh, everything will be uh, done before 10 days of your exam date so i will try uh, you are going to attempt your exams in june so i will try to complete this syllabus till 22nd of june 2021 so you, you may have maybe 8 to 10 days for the preparations sabina reading the technical articles is very useful very useful but first of all you should uh, focus on covering the knowledge you should focus on memorizing the rules if you are done with memorizing these rules and then you have extra time then obviously uh, you can read the book you can uh, uh, go for technical articles that's very useful i'm not saying that uh, you should not go for technical article i'm just going uh, prioritizing the things for you guys okay so 22nd of may 21 is the deadline everything will be covered before this date and i'm repeating once again this is not commitment this is try and i will put my best to cover your syllabus along with the practice before 22nd of may 2021 our class time will remain same throughout this uh, session Eight p.m. onwards, Pakistan Standard Time. And please be aware of the time difference. And normally we have sessions of almost three to four hours, three point five, three to four hours. Uh, we may have a uh, fifteen to twenty minutes break after two hours, maybe. So, but all of our sessions. um uh, may, may be uh, duration of 3 to 4 hours and uh, on saturday and sunday 